Thank you, sweetie. <laughs> Good, afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. You know what I'm saying? You're talking to my son. Um, he always give me the orders that we're going to be going live two minutes before and then 12 o'clock. We're actually live. And so I'm over here communicating with him. So you probably heard me say, can they see me? <laughs> Well, this is the day that the Lord hath made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it, and we're so glad. I am so glad to be here with you. If you see me drinking water, it's because I had to kind of wrestle with the little puppy before I can come on, but God is good. Um, this is just an amazing day, such an amazing time. I'm back. I'm here with you at noonday Bible study, and right now I just see that there's a couple of people on, and I'm just excited to be here. God has been so good. God is God is forever faithful. Despite all the things that we may encounter in a run of a day, in a run of a week, God is forever faithful. And I'm just so grateful for his goodness and his mercy and his loving kindness. Hallelujah. Um, this is just an amazing day. And I'm excited about being here. Um, I kind of just kind of sloshing the waters as they say. Hopefully you'll go ahead and you'll share this um, video as they always say. Um, you know, this is the month of May and we just, um, just celebrated Mother's Day, not last Sunday, but the Sunday before. And it was a wonderful day. And I just believe like my daughter says that this is Mother's Month. And, um, so God kind of has been dealing with me concern concerning women. And so on this, on this Bible, this noonday Bible study, I'm going to talk to the women. And, you know, it's not, I'm not saying we're discrediting the men. That's not what I'm saying. But, you know, when you think about a woman, there's a lot that we have to deal with. And despite all the things that we have to deal with, I enjoy, I love being a woman. I, I just love being a woman. And so there's some things that God want me to get into on this morning. But let's go ahead and let's just... Um, give God some praise and some glory. God, we just thank you, God. You are such a good God, a holy God. And we just love you, Father God, because you first love us. Father, we thank you for allowing us to be here at this noonday time, Father. Father, we thank you, God, because it was your hand that woke us up this morning and allowed us to see another day, which was not promised. But we're here, Lord God. And so, Father, right now, I'm asking you, God, to, to allow us to come together, Lord God, at this moment to hear what the Spirit is saying in this particular setting. Father, I ask you right now to touch those that are hurting, touch those that are in the hospital, touch those, Lord God, that need the healing power of God and those that are not hurting from physical, from, from, from surgery pain or, or physical pain, but God, emotional pain. Father, that is real, and I think sometimes we neglect that, Lord God. And so, Father, those that are dealing with the emotional turmoil of on the inside, Father, that woman, I ask you right now, God, to touch our heart and touch our mind. Father, I ask you to bring her into a place of knowing who she is. But, God, I honor you right now, Lord God, because we know that you are the God that healeth thee. And, Father, the same healing power that you released over me, Lord God, I pray that you will touch someone this morning. Father, they woke up, bogged down, Lord God, saying, I can't take it another day. And God, this is going to be their day of deliverance. This is their day of healing. This is their day of declaration. Father, this is a great day for a miracle. Father, I thank you because this is the day for my miracle. And Father, we decree it and we declare it to be so, Lord God, that it's infusing our spirit, it's infusing our DNA, that God, this is the day for our miracle. So God, we're in a miracle position, a miracle posture, that you can release a miracle, Lord God, on our behalf. So Father, we put our hands together and we celebrate you, oh God, because you are great and greatly to be praised. We bless you, we honor you, we lift you up, we thank you, God, for your goodness and your mercy. God, I could pray the whole time, but that's not what you called me to do on today. So, Father, right now, I thank you that in this moment, Father, you are manifesting your greatness as only you can. And we thank you for it, Father God, for such a time as this. So we put our hands together and we bless you. 
We thank you, Lord God, for this time, this moment, in Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead and put your hands together and get ready to bless God. I know that you all are, are blessed. You're charged. You're on fire. I hope and pray that those that come on live don't just pop on and pop off. You know, do a drive-by. Come and fellowship. Take this time just to sit in the presence of the Lord and hear what God is saying. Um, I know you already probably know the title of this noonday Bible study because I always give it to, if God gives it to me, I always try to give it to Mikhail early. And so, therefore, you already know what we're going to be ministering to. But in ministering about, but in lieu of Mother's Day, I thought it would be befitting to kind of stay along the lines of women. And um, on this afternoon, God has given me the title, Woman, Know Your Worth. Woman, know your worth. So I hope and pray that my spiritual daughters that are online, um, you share this video um, because there's some things that God is going to ha have me to say that other women need to know. You know, I um, often think about myself and have conversations with myself. And I don't have a problem sharing myself with others. You know, when I talk to different women, um, I, I, I always use me as um, an example because there is so much that God has done on the inside of me. You know, if you knew me before, you knew that I was this shy, timid, um, weak, skinny, scrawny young lady. And although I'm, I'm, I'm still thin, like the lady said on the movie, I'm lean. I'm, I know who I am in Christ Jesus. And so I had to learn how I had to learn to know who I who I was because life has a way of shaping you. It shapes your identity. It shapes why you act the way you act. And I know a lot of people try to disregard um, their past, their upbringing, but it does mold you. It does make you out to be who you are right now. And so when I had an encounter with God, God came in and he began to show me myself. He began to expose me to who I was. And I had to learn me all over again because I was one that did not know who she was. And so I, when I often talk to women, I often, God always create an avenue for me to put myself in there and let them know that if God did it for me, now, I know God can do it for you because we don't serve two separate gods. We serve one God. And so I know what God can do because what he did for me. So let's get into it. Woman, know your worth. Genesis 1, in the NIV says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female. He created them. And I'm going to go ahead and talk to the women on the day because womanhood is the determining factor of a woman as defined by the Bible. When God created two genders, according to Genesis 5 and 2 in the NIV, it says he created them male and female and blessed them. And he named them mankind and they were created. And so we understand that everything that God created us, okay? So we're going back to, um, what is it, Bible, Bible school or Sunday school, okay? So just bear along with me. We're in Sunday school right now, so all of this stuff you know. But when we talk about the worth, a woman knowing her worth, I looked that word up last night. And it says that the definition of worth is value, that quality of a thing which renders its usefulness or which will produce an equivalent good in something, something, some other thing. Let me say that again. Worth means value. That quality of a thing which renders its useful or which will produce an equivalent good in some other thing. Women, we have to know our value. So now I gave you some scriptures to let you, we kind of slide into some stuff. So let's keep going. God also introduced different roles for each gender. Today I'm talking to the women because this is Mother's Month. Okay, I'm talking to you woman. He created their bodies and brains of men and women to work differently and to fill complementary roles. So let me go back. God also introduced different roles to each gender. A man does not need to act like a woman because he can never be a woman. Uh, don't send me hate mail. Don't get mad at me. This is just it. A man does not need to act like a woman because he can never be a woman. He can never process information like a woman because his brain, his DNA, and his entire, entire being are male. You are a man. Your brain processes stuff. 
differently. The same is true for women trying to be a man. You Women, we cannot be a man because God wired them differently. The way they think, the way they operate is completely different. And so, man, you cannot be a woman. You, Our brains, God gave us different roles. Our brain, the way we process information is completely different. God made two genders. Okay, so I'm talking to the woman. So, woman, let me talk to you. Before you are a wife, a mother, a businesswoman, etc., you are first a woman. And I think sometimes that we, that certain women get so lost in what they do that they never define who they are. Before you are a wife, before you are a mother, you are first a woman. And you have to learn how to be a woman because, you know, we it was very important back in the day that we had big mama. We had our moms. We had our grandmamas. They taught us how to be a woman. They taught us how to be proper. They taught us how to dress. They say, girl, go sit your piss tail self down somewhere. They told you what to do and what not to do. And so now you got to learn that before you are a wife, before you are a mother, before you are a businesswoman, you are first a woman. And I think sometimes we lose our identity in what we do that we never really, that apart from what we do, we are nobody. You got to understand, woman, that you are somebody. God created you, and we're going to get into that. So let me keep scrolling. Woman, you are a beautiful creation. You are a beautiful creation. You are a beautiful creation. <laughs> I got my husband talking in my ear. <laughs> he the pastor, so he can do what he want to do. Women, you are a beautiful creation. God just, he broke the mold when he made a woman. Now let's get into that. Genesis 2 and 21 and 22 in the NIV says, So the Lord... God caused a man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib. He had taken out a man and he brought her to the man. With, with a woman, God didn't start from scratch like he did with a man. He made man from the dust. But the first surgery was performed by God when he caused man to fall into a deep sleep. He opened up his side and took a rib and he took that rib and he made woman. He took tissue that he had, God took tissue that he had already created, that he had already made, made and made a woman. Let's learn. I, last night I kind of went into some things because I had to. I had to look at the rib. Ribs have amazing regenerative powers. Portions of a rib bone and cartilage removed in a bone graft surgery will regrow in a few months' time, as long as the pericondrium is left intact. A rib cage consists of twelve thoracic vertebrae and the 24 ribs in addition to the sternum. So you're talking about a rib, that a rib had the power to regrow. That's what God made woman out of. God opened up man. He specially made a woman. He put man in a deep sleep, that when man woke up, there you were, a woman in all her beauty. Ooh, who is this? Where you come from? Oh my God. <laughs> He's probably like, what the world? What is this? This is for me? Oh, my God. You came on my side? He looked down and saw that there was a scar right there because wherever there's surgery, there is a scar. This woman came out of me. Oh, my God. She don't look like me, and I guarantee his eyes. That's why woman. sometimes when a man look at your woman, at their wife, let me say this. Sometimes I catch my husband looking at me. I just be doing stuff, and I have to look up. He's just looking. And I asked him, I said, are you okay? Um, I said, you're looking at me. And he tell me this. He said, I'm always looking at you. At 34 years, my husband still look at me. 
And that's beautiful. And so, women, you got to understand that you are a beautiful specimen. You were created. You have a specific role that God made you for. You are important. You were made out of a rib. You were made out of the man's cartilage. God specifically, specially designed you. I mean, come on. I'm trying to get you to understand that you are specially made. Women are needed. We are special. And God, I always say this, that God knows exactly what he's doing with you. Now, let me say this. I'm just going to go ahead and just talk to you. Because sometimes in this, in this world, women have been degraded. They've been treated less than. They've been demoralized. They made them, women have been made to feel like they don't know anything. But that's not true. Women, we are especially made. You know, we can take a lot. You know, if you, if, if all of those that have had children, you actually, and not, not just one child, but you turn around and you did it again, you did it again, you did it four times. That tells me that you can take a lot. And so when we go through life, we need to always go back to the way God made us. You are special. You are, one, you, are, you are a powerhouse. Let me get into some stuff because we have the tendency to think that a beautiful woman is the woman that wears the Gucci, that wears the Louis Vuitton, and, and all the stuff like that. But let me tell you something. Those are just clothes. Beauty is not external. You can dress up the external and still have an ugly inside. But when I, my interpretation of beauty is this, a woman that know who she is, especially in Christ Jesus, a woman that stands her posture um, is upright. She know the people are talking about, about her. She don't give attention to the naysayers, but what she do, she give attention to what God has said about her. Cause see, sometimes women can be so very catty, so so caddish. We are so, you know, we can, women tend to be envious of somebody else that have made strides. And so you got to understand that you don't know what this woman had to go through behind the scenes. That when she step out, she steps out to say, I'm going to put my best foot forward. Because you don't know the tears that I shared last night. And so I, I heard the Holy Spirit say this, and I got to say this. He said, never let them catch you where they left you. For all those people, and I'm going to say it again, never let them catch you where they left you. Because, see, some of you didn't, you know, the people that walked away from you, they say, oh, they'll, she'll never amount to anything. You know, she'll never be anybody. But you, and what happened is you came and you, and you, you listened to their words, but, oh, my God, somebody was praying for you. If it wasn't for the power of prayer. I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for the love that God gave me and through my husband. My husband literally loved me to life. And I don't want to talk too much about my husband because I can get into it. Because not every woman has a husband. But every woman needs to have love for herself. The worst thing to see a woman do is hate herself because she is, she is comparing herself to somebody else. No, you're not somebody else. You, God, specifically made you the way you are because there is something on the inside of you that only you possess that needs to be released in the world. Women, you got some of the, we have some of the greatest ideas. We are women, if you're like me, I have tried multiple businesses. And some of them, and all of them fail. But what does that mean? I'm going to get up and I'm going to try again. I don't know how to quit. I, at one time, I used to quit, you know, just walk away. But there is this burning desire on the inside of me that I can do it, that I can be it, that God has placed something on the inside of me. God has called me for this purpose. I'm here for a reason. And so let's get back to beauty. Let's get back to the beauty because we are inundated with the, with the society today, the beautiful hair and the, the the makeup that is so flawless and the the right kind of body and the shapes and all that kind of stuff. You know, the worst thing I can see is a beautiful woman that is exposing herself because that tells me that she deals with low self-esteem. She don't know her worth. She don't know her value. So therefore, she is only led by her body. Her only thing she got going for herself is her body. No, sweetheart, there is more to you than a, 
a butt and some boobs. There is something that God wants to put here in your brains that will call you to be a beautiful woman, to make you a woman that can be loved and adored because the type of the, the type of um, aura we release is the type of attention that we get. Did y'all hear me, women? And so in this day and age, we got to learn how to groom our, our young ladies to be wives. We understand not everybody want to be married because sometimes you have witnessed bad things going on in the marriage of those that are around you. But let me tell you something. Marriage is a good thing. And the Bible says, he that finds a wife finds a good thing. And so you got to be already, there are certain things that a woman already need to know. You might not want to get married. Okay, marriage might not be for everybody. Okay. Hey, listen, I'm not trying to shove that on you. But I'm do, I am saying that you should be able to clean your house. Keep yourself clean. Cook a meal. Do these things. Handle your business. Handle your affairs. Be a woman. Be upright. I'm talking to you women. I'm talking to you today. Because it's a sad thing to see beautiful young ladies trying to be a cheap imitation of somebody else. Who are you? What has God put in you that is so specific that yes, it might look like somebody else. But no, only you can do it. I had to learn how to discover myself. I had to learn how to fall in love with Monique. And when I fell in love with Monique, I realized that Monique is bad. Women that's listening to my voice, you are a bad woman. My God, I'm not talking about, I'm talking about good bad. The, 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 the kind of bad with the seasoning on top. That kind of bad. You are somebody. You are a businesswoman. You're called to greater. You're called to do more. But see, you can't be walking around here projecting self-hate. Oh, woe is me because of what somebody said about you. I don't care what people say about you. Those individuals that spend so much time talking about you, it tells you their worth about themselves. And on top of that, if they're not talking about you, if nobody is saying anything negative about you, I will question my salvation. I will question everything that I'm doing. Everybody just love me? Mm, no. But when you understand the challenges and the fight, see, some of us had to get down on our knees and we had to fight for the right to think same thoughts. We had to fight for the right to be who we are today. People don't know the fight. People don't know the struggle. People don't know that the flaws that that you have. Let me tell you something. I was in the bathroom the other day and I was having a conversation with the Holy Spirit. I said, Holy Spirit, you let me walk out the door like I'm flawless. He said, only I can take a flaw in the visual, dress them up and use them and they look like they're perfect. Only the Holy Spirit can do that. And we all have flaws, but I'm not going to reveal my flaws to you. Why? Because you're going to take them and you're going to use them against me. I'm already dealing with these things behind the scenes. <laughs> I'm not trying to be perfect. Like my husband said, I'm trying to be pure. And I'm working on me every day because I know that where I am right now, there's always a better version of myself. And I'm striving to be better. Not for you to like me, for me to love me because I know that there's something God put on the inside of me that God wants to display before the world. And so on, on to you women that are listening to the sound of my voice, there is something so uniquely God has intricately placed on the inside of you that only you can bring forth. You need to get down on your knees through all the pain, through all the anguish. Yes, you done shared your tears. Yes, you done got upset. Yes, you said, I ain't doing this no more. But you find yourself coming right back and you get down on your knees and you cry and I say, God, what is it about me? What is it that makes you love me the way you love me? God, I just cannot give up. Because let me tell you something. If you got daughters in the house, those daughters are looking at you to be an example. And believe 
me. They are observing you. They are watching you because you are their greatest role model. Not the women on the TV and this reality TV. Oh my God, I, I just I, I just don't know how we get caught up in reality TV. It's a sad thing to see black women, even if they are faking, fighting and all kind of stuff. It, it does something to me, so I don't watch it. But I'm I'm looking at the women that's you know that that finding themselves doing something with their life. God has called you to be greater than where you are. Yes, quitting comes across because sometimes the intensity of the warfare, the intensity of being you, sometimes it's great. It is great. But don't quit on you. Don't give up on you. Don't give up on yourself because people don't like you. Don't give up on yourself because you're an enigma. People trying to figure you out. Sometimes I had a hard time trying to figure my own self out. I can't explain myself to you when I don't know myself. But I had to get to a place that I was settled with me. And once I got settled, I said, okay, God, this is who I am. God, show me how to be. Show me how to be the best that I can be so that you can use me for your glory. Because, see, there is something so great on the inside of you. Really, woman, I'm speaking to you right now. That woman that thought about giving up. Yes, life has been difficult. It's been a hard-pressed moment with the pandemic and all the, the responsibilities that you have right now. You're teaching your children. You didn't know if you were smart enough to do it. You're working on a job or if you, you got laid off, you're trying to figure out how you're going to provide. Unemployment has not kicked in yet. Your taxes have been held up. You got a lot going on. You can't get to your family, although things are starting to turn around now. But for some, it has not yet. You lost some loved ones. You lost yourself. You don't know who you are. I'm speaking to you today. Those hard things are going to be some of the greatest setup in your life because you had to trust God. When you thought people were there, you couldn't connect with people because we had to stay away from people. But my God, you was able to connect with God. And you begin to get down on your knees and you begin to pray like you never prayed before. And you begin to be thankful for God that has saw you through one day at a time. And now you're, 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 you got a place, you, you're at a place where you're trusting God. You're walking by faith. This is your moment. God has, God has called me to more than this. And I am so excited because my greater days are upon me. My greater days for my, my husband and my children. I grew my granddaughter and for the family of Newburgh. Greater days are upon me. Yeah, it was a little, it was a little intense, but greater days are upon us. Why? Because we did not give up. And woman, I know you had to fight. You had to be everything that your children needed you to be. And you lost yourself. Now I need you to re, I need you to rediscover who you are. Come on. There is something so great about you. Woman, know your worth. Don't demoralize yourself. Don't let society put you down. Don't let bad experiences and bad relationships define who you are. Yes, that's what you did. That's not who you are. You are somebody in Christ Jesus. I'm speaking to you right now that this is the time for you to get up, shake the dust off, shake the words off, get rid of them. Those words that lodged into your spirit, ask God to pull them out. Shut down the voices of the naysayer closed. If you were hanging around people that's always trying to remind of, remind you of who you used to be, get rid of them. You need a clean slate on today. Why? Because there is something so amazing about you. We were a woman was made out of the rib of a man. And like I said, Adam probably lost his mind when he saw a woman. Like, oh my God, this is a specimen right here. God, what am I going to do with this? Is this mine? God said, this is yours. I made her out of your rib. She is special. You got to handle her with care. So if God is requiring the man to handle us with care, women, you got to learn how to handle yourself with care. You can't find yourself in every circumstance and situation. No, no, stop neglecting you. This is a time where you got to stand up and be the best person that you can be. Why? Because there's you are an asset. 
You are an asset and we need what's on the inside of you. So beauty is not wearing the nice clothes, the fine clothes. Okay, you got that and what? It's, it's bad to see a woman wearing all this and still don't like herself. But I can go to Kmart. I can go to Zare. Do you remember Woolsworth and all those things? Before I could buy stuff like this, I had to dress up what I could afford. And I looked good, too. Because, see, it's, it's not designer clothes that define the woman. It's the woman who design, define the clothes. Come on, ladies. Come on, put your hands together and celebrate a woman. I love seeing beautiful women. We got to learn how to compliment each other. Stop looking down on your nose at your sister or a woman. You know, compliment her. Not compete with her, compliment her. You never know what it will do. It will give, the, give her the encouragement to continue to fight the good fight of faith. Women, we are important. We are needed. You are needed. I'm speaking to you today, woman. Know your worth. You are valuable. You are an asset. Yes, you've gone through some difficult times. Okay, we all have. But you're still here. You didn't lose your mind. There is someone that gone through what you went through and they lost their mind. You're still here. And if you're still here, you got a reason and a purpose. So let's fulfill it. Be on a quest to fulfill purpose. Get into the presence of God and say, God, what is it so unique about me? I don't want to be like other people. I want to be me. I love me. Really, I love me with all my issues, all my flaws. I love me. I, lo I love me. You got to learn how to love yourself. So come on, let's pray. Father, we just thank you, Lord God, for this time and this moment. God, we thank you for the word that has gone forth, the word of encouragement to those women, Lord God, that have been struggling with who they are. God, a woman can't be a man and a man can't be a woman. But God, you created two genders. And on today, God, I was speaking to the value and the worth of a woman. Let this woman, Lord God, find out who she is in Christ Jesus. It is only through you, God, that we can find our true purpose or why we're here. God, she's gone through the, she searched through the ashes of her life, Lord God. And Father God, I pray right now that she find herself at the bottom, still breathing, still alive, waiting to be recaptured. I ask you right now to touch her heart and touch her mind. God, those people that are around her that only want to bring her down, remove them out of the way. God, sometimes we got to be alone that we can get into a place that you can go, draw us unto yourself, that you can speak those things to us, Lord God. And so, God, on today, I speak life to you, woman. I command you to rise up and know that you are valuable and you are needed. We need you today. And so, Father, I ask you right now to touch her. In the midst of all the circumstances and situations she, she finds herself in, let her arise and be strengthened. God, we pray for her. God, we pray her strength. We pray for her now. Let the joy of the Lord spring up on the inside of her. God, today is a new day. God, let her know her worth. We thank you for such a time as this, Lord God. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, y'all. Put your hands together and celebrate God. Hallelujah. Women, know your worth. You are bad. You are bad. You are awesome and amazing. And I just want to say thank you for allowing me to come in and encourage your heart. We're going to see you tonight at 6 o'clock with the man of God. Pastor Luther is going to be ministering a powerful word. And so I want to see you at New Birth. And for those of you that can't make it, make sure you view online. We are, I'm excited. Can't you tell I'm excited? So come on, let's put your hands together and just go have an amazing day. Love you. Thank you for viewing.